Cornish walking trails today. We're in Newquay. In today's video, looks a bit like a railway station, doesn't it? Oh. We have this old tourist guide. These outfits in here are so interesting and sympathetically maintained. So, in September 1967, the Beatles rolled into Newquay, and that's why they ended up staying here. Here. Hello! Andrew, you've been very naughty. And have a look at the opulence inside. Yeah. Oh wow, look at that! Our video today is inspired by this 1930s tourist brochure. It's literally jam-packed with adverts for Newquay hotels. So we thought we'd take a nostalgic look at what they were like then and what they're like today. We have some wonderful stories about past guests, a hundred foot lift Ooh. that took you straight to the beach. Oh, we're in the lift. But let's start with the Headland Hotel and the riots whilst it was being built. So you cannot come to Newquay and take a look at the hotels from a nostalgic point of view without coming here to the Headland Hotel, one of Newquay's largest and most prominent hotels. And it is in our brochure, right at the back on this side. Shall I read it out to you? It says, Headland Hotel Newquay, the premier hotel in the west of England, patronised by royalty, occupies the finest position on the Cornish coast with sea view from every window, which is probably true, isn't it? Extensive private grounds with splendid bathing beaches adjoining, magnificent new sun lounge, ballroom and winter gardens, hot and cold water in all bedrooms, suites and bedrooms with private bathrooms. I think that's the first time we've seen that advertised in this brochure. Normally they're quite keen to tell you you've got hot and cold water in your bathroom, in your bedroom, which is probably just a sink at that time. So to actually have an ensuite bathroom is a departure for the rest of the adverts in this book. And it also tells you it has its own orchestra, garage, AA and RAC membership. So the Headland today remains one of Cornwall's premier hotels, quite expensive to stay here now. But it is so stunningly beautiful. It's dominates the Newquay skyline from both sides, from the town side and Fistral. As you come closer to the hotel, you really get a feel for how tall it is when you've stood further away and you're looking down on it. It doesn't seem out of proportion, but stood beside it, it's really tall. Originally built with the four floors, so they show in the photograph here. It's pretty much original. And here's their claim to royalty, as mentioned in our brochure. Oh, brilliant. And a letter. I'm obliged to you for your letter of yesterday's day. It was a great pleasure that I've written to the private secretary at the Home Office saying how perfectly satisfactory the arrangements were for the visit of the Duke and Duchess of Cornwall <laughs> to the Headland Hotel. We are sat in the very comfortable ballroom, what used to be the ballroom of the Headland Hotel. It's less windy in here, so we'll tell you the story of the Headland Hotel. And there wasn't such an easy smooth ride for this hotel. The hotel's architect is Sylvanus Travail, and he wanted to build one of the most impressive hotels in the West Country, and he certainly achieved that. There was lots of envious people. However, in getting there, there was quite a few riots from the local fishermen. They'd use this area as common land and they'd graze their sheep here. They'd also drive their nets here, they had huts here. But they weren't happy about a fabulous hotel going up in town headland. The hotel's website gives a glorious account of this and it says, from the laying of the first bricks, heated arguments ensued and workers were threatened constantly. One fateful night, an angry mob trashed the foundation walls 
and scaffolding before tipping the foreman's hut into the Atlantic. When Sylvanus rushed to see the damage the next morning, the mob were waiting for him. He was pelted with eggs, pinned to a railing, and contemporary reports say subjected to a very fierce outpouring of contempt and insolent abuse. With the local builders too intimidated to cross the fishermen, 200 unemployed Cornish miners were drafted in to complete the project. But the opposition didn't let up. Fires were started, arrests were made, and Sylvanus eventually even brought in traction engines armed with steam hoses to keep the rioters at bay. Can you imagine that? The old traction engines, steam, you know, steam driven traction engines with hoses pelting rioters. Might be like like the riots that you see today, wouldn't it, with the cannons, the water cannons? I can't believe that. In in little old Nuki. <laughs> Amazing. That's incredible, isn't it? Look at that. Gosh. I think some Venus would be impressed. <laughs> oh, complete with bride and groom. How was the Mesa? Mini Headland Hotel. Beside the model of the Headland Hotel. It just keeps on giving this model. Wow. Incredible. I don't think every room had a sea view. Are you well, challenging that, that, book, that? Well, that book you've got from the early 1930s, yeah. one of the things that they, is a big selling point is every single room has a sea view. Yeah. And I was just wondering that the actual front facade, obviously looking back more towards where the town area is. Yeah. I was, I was yeah, I was going to challenge that. But you think they might be right. I need an extremely tall pole, but you'll have to believe me <laughs> that sea is actually over there. So if you're up higher, I reckon you could see it. It's a car behind you as well. So the sea is right in front of us. So there's the coast, Andrew. Yeah. There's the sea. All right, I, I, um, and I agree with you. There's the bedrooms. Yes. Didn't we stay here one time? We did, many, many years ago. I think we had one of the windows on the first floor on this side. It was definitely on this side. I, we came for a Christmas do. Yeah, do you remember the days of a dinner and dance? Yeah, in... 1997. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, there we go. Isn't it awful when you can um, remember being married in the last century? <laughs> Makes me feel very old. <laughs> I love the room at the very, very top. Got a great view, isn't it? So, which do you think is the most expensive room? Which is oh, the got, best room? It's got to be either the one right at the top up there. Yeah. Or the ones on either end, I reckon. Maybe that one with the big circular five windowed bay. Beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, he, he did a good job, didn't he? It's certainly it's did. impressive. What I like about it is not only impressive, but you've still got a lot of the detailing, all the terracotta finesse is above the windows and on the balconies. It just adds that little bit of extra, and all the arches above the windows. It's a bit like a railway station, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm sure they'd love you saying that. Well, like, you know, a fancy <laughs> railway station. A very fancy railway station. You know, I'm not very good on my railway stations, but I'm thinking something like Euston, maybe, oh, or King's Cross, yeah. or something like that. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Have you seen as well, at the very top, there's two faces looking down? I wondered who they might be. Let's see if I can film that. Let's see if we can out. find out. If you know, pop it in the comments. So if, like me, you like going to somewhere which was used as a filming location, you might recognise the headland was used in an ad adaptation of Roald Dahl's The Witches from 1990. The lead was played by Angelica Houston. I think Rowan Atkinson was in it as well. I think he was the hotel manager. Oh, God. But a lot of the interior <laughs> shots were done here. Oh, OK. Yeah. Beautiful building. Would have been a great backdrop. Also got a bit of trivia as well. So Angelica yeah. Houston at the time was being courted by Jack Nicholson. And he was in America. She was filming here. And he was constantly calling the uh, florists in Newquay to have bouquets delivered to the hotel for her. <laughs> oh, how romantic! Yeah, it is, isn't it? Did he win her over? I can't remember. <laughs> we'll have, have to find look out. it up. So, Andrew, that's looking at the Atlantic Ocean. 
Yes, it is. Our next hotel. Yes. Brilliant <laughs> one show link here. Yeah, it's called the Ocean, is it? <laughs> it's the Atlantic, the Atlantic, which is just around the corner. Come on then. <laughs> yeah, I like what you did there. Uh, that's very good. Smooth, very smooth, it? yeah, Silky very smooth. smooth. We did flick through this book and we didn't recognise every hotel. Newquay has changed so much, but this one, we think, may well be here, leaving the Headland Hotel and heading up past the golf course. It looks very similar, it has a turret on the left, four, what do you call them, dormer windows, and it now has a turret on the other end. We think it might be the Carmarth Hotel, which boasted that it faces the golf links and has the finest position. Yes. Yep, it sure has got a view to the golf course. Here's a question for you. How much is this land on the golf course worth with that view looking across Spistral? I'm sure one day it will be developed and gone. Yeah, I think that pretty much is it. I think in redeveloping it, they've added the other turret to kind of balance it out. And it works, but I think they're flats with the restaurant. No, it says lifestyle hotel, so it's a hotel. I thought it was flat. It's not still a hotel. Anyway, we digress. Let's go and find the Atlantic, which was one of the biggest competitors for the Headland Hotel in the late Victorian era. So here is the Atlantic Hotel. I always feel as though the Atlantic has been kind of unsympathetically maintained, can I put it that way? The development of it and the way it's now rendered and painted, it's it kind of lost that grandeur. It's just become a bit of a, a large building on a headland. It doesn't have that imposing elegance of the Headland Hotel, I said Headland twice there. But you know what I mean. I'm sure inside they can do whatever they like, but Maybe the outside these days doesn't strike the elegant note. We go back to our brochure from 1936. Oh no, what, did, what year 32, did you? 1932. 1932. Um, the Atlantic has advertising right on the inside front cover, prime location within the pamphlet. And it actually claims it's Cornwall's leading hotel. It says unique position, 120 rooms, all with hot and cold running water, and many with communicating bathrooms. Ah, so it is competing with the Headland Hotel isn't it? then, isn't it? Every room with a sea view, modern private suites, justly famous for its cuisine and service, splendid public rooms, billiards, large ballroom, own new tennis courts, miniature golf, clock golf, own garage, and 27 private lockups, and it's near the golf course. Oh. Atlantic Hotel Newquay. So if we look here, it looks more like a brick building to me. Yeah. And you don't have any of the additions at ground level and you certainly have a beautiful slate roof. Today we seem to have a lot of additions at ground level, maybe not so sympathetically done. And we've got an extra floor giving it a flat roof, which maybe detracts from the character a little. It does. It doesn't look as fancy as the headland, does it? Not and, and the headland looks almost intact. It looks very almost authentic. yeah. It looks very authentic, as if hardly yeah. anything's changed. Yeah. Can we go back to that picture again? Yeah. There's one thing I've spotted. We are currently stood here. Right. right? Yes. And can you see? That's got markings for a tennis court. <gasps> oh, we're on a tennis court. Yeah. Oh, you are smart. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes, you're right. New balls, please. So there's, 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 <laughs> sorry. Okay, well we need to go in, don't we? And have a look at the opulence inside? Yes. Okay. This wind, how many tennis balls flew into the Atlantic? <laughs> I'm not retrieving them. They're wet balls. <laughs>
the original panelling. Do you think that might be mahogany so that made dark? Oh, it's beautiful. Wow. Oh, look at that window. So that probably was the original facade. Oh, I see. And the ground floor extension gives you an indoor pool. Oh, wow. Look at those views. What do you think? Wow, it's surprising, is it, from the outside? It really doesn't look that much. It looks a little bit uncared for, doesn't it? When you're inside, oh, it's opulent, amazing, isn't it? Isn't it? I love yeah. the way it's been furnished. That's cool. It's beautiful. <laughs> so, Andrew, we've come up here specifically to look for a building we referred have. to as the Annex. Yes. Do you think that might be it? It looks like an Annex. Well, it's quite a posh Annex, isn't it? <laughs> we will have to go and ask. Okay. Now, would you like me to explain why yes. we're looking for a building yes. called the Annex? Okay. Yes. So in September 1967, the Beatles rolled into Niki on their magical mystery tour. They stayed here at the Atlantic Hotel. Yes. When they arrived, I don't think things had really been planned through properly for them. And they were put into what is called the Annex, which is a slightly separate area to the hotel. Do you realise that's 56 years ago? Gosh, it is, isn't it? <laughs> So we asked, we asked the ladies behind the desk in the reception, we said in 1967 the Beatles stayed here, do you know anything about it? Yes. And they were really kind to us, weren't they? And they said they actually stayed in the area which is now the swimming pool. The actual swimming pool. And where we just filmed, which was the annex, is right yes. next door, so it kind of makes sense. It's that it? area, isn't Let's it? have a look. This back then would have been the annex. Yeah. So in the film you watched the other day, yeah. it said that fans were kind of between this building and the hotel behind and they had to run the gauntlet. Yeah, <laughs> basically they're going in for their food and that type of thing. All the fans yeah. would be outside and they'd have to run across to the main hotel, isn't it? Can you imagine that? <laughs> Can I just say, I think the hotel are missing the trick. Yeah. So if they stayed here, you've got four tiny little poolside apartments here. Poolside one, two, three, and four. I think they've missed a trick. They should rename them. What should be John, Paul, George, and Ringo. Oh, very good. There we go. Boom, boom. Yeah. Not even a plaque on the wall. <laughs> You'd expect a little plaque You would, wouldn't you? A little blue plaque. Well, maybe not even a blue one, just a slate one. So. so the story I heard was in September 67 when they did their magical mystery tour. Yeah. Um, Brian Epstein, who was their manager, just died. Oh, okay. And oh, I don't cool think, chap. I don't think that the tour had been very well organised because of all that that was going on in the background. And when they arrived in the UK, as far as I understand it, they didn't have any accommodation. Did they have a plan? Well, I'm not sure, but they, they came obviously to the hotel and I got the impression that the hotel was struggling to cater for them. Oh, to actually put them full? anywhere, because it was full maybe. Uh, and that's why they ended up staying here. Yeah. Now, I don't know if that's definitely true. I'm going to try and find out when we get home. But Do if I can, research. I'm sure there's somebody that's watching that yeah. can fill us in and yeah. put the details below in the comments. Save and Andrew an hour or two. Oh, Just pop it in the comments. Yeah. yeah. I need some help. <laughs> Otherwise, it's a hard day's night for you. It is a hard day's Come night. Come on. Hey. I'm impressed. Yay! <laughs> Sarah, we need a thumbnail for this video. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing the silly poses now. Okay, that's it. Arm up. Wrong one. Top hand down. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, so. Oh, I want. Oh, no, I was filming. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. So in, in the film, The Magical Mystery Tour, when they were in New Quay, one of the things they did film around was the Hewers Hut. And it's literally there, it's that white building. One of the oldest buildings in New Quay, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it's called it? a Hewers Hut, because back in the day, before all the tourists came and what have you, pilchard fishing was the, one of the main industries in, in New Quay. It was a quiet little, almost like a hamlet, wasn't it? It was a very small little place. And they would stand on the cliff top here, looking for the shoals of a little fish coming in. And then when yeah. they saw them, they would shout out, heaver, heaver. And all the boats would fly out from the harbour, would. wouldn't they? Go and catch their 
lunch. So that's the Lewis hut. Now, yes. Going back, that does yes. feature in the film. Yes, yes they're clambering the all over talk. it with their fans scurrying around them, aren't they? they? Are. But if they were staying there, yeah, it's literally looking out the window. We'll go and have a look at that building, yeah. mate. Shall and we? They probably thought it'd probably be a bit easier to film because they could rush back to the hotel. Yeah. So Andrew, I think you rang your mum last night and she confirmed that at that moment in time your mum and dad were living in Newquay. They were. I said to mum, I said, mum, do you remember the Beatles coming to Newquay? And my mum said she, she does. <laughs> she was working in the town at the time in a shop and she says that she remembers seeing the bus go by. She saw the, saw the back of the bus and people running after it. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't put two and two together. My dad saw the bus coming through as well. And um, yeah, apparently it caused quite a stir in, in the town. Yeah. I don't think people actually knew they were coming in advance. So you can, you can imagine the word getting out and everybody flocking here. The biggest band of the century, yeah. wasn't it? And they were here for two days. Wow. If you're enjoying our video, give us a thumbs up. And if you're really enjoying our video, help us out a little bit. We're on Buy Me A Coffee. Put the details below. Thanks, cheers. Beep beep, out the way. Look, that's that annex building. Yeah. And they were literally across the road from the old Hewers hut. <laughs> so I wonder if they did that deliberately because they knew it was going to be tricky to film. They wanted to film New Key, they wanted yeah. to bring it into the film, and this was on the doorstep? Yes. Tumble out of their hotel, and then they could film this beautiful old building. Oh my goodness. But you're afraid of heights. You're seriously going to try and get on the roof? Yay! No, turn, it. turn the camera off and get up there properly. Okay. <laughs> That's further than you got last time. The steps are so uneven it, it and they throw you out. Right? I noticed that last time, I think I only got to the Let's third see if step. There's a handrail here or a lift, maybe. It would make it so much easier. 14th century. They reckon that goes back to the 14th century. Gosh, it's old, isn't it? Yeah. We must crack on. We've been enjoying ourselves way too much. We've got to get back to the Victoria. The Victoria has got to feature in this video. Yes. So that, we can see it from here, can't we? Yes, it dominates the Newquay skyline. It's a massive building. I'll take a photo of it. Yeah. It's over there. So here we are, Hotel Victoria. It still looks grand, doesn't it? Mm. Very impressive, isn't it? So was this the very first fancy hotel then? It's a bit of a story about that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Might be the subject of a separate video yeah. about famous nightclubs in Cornwall. <laughs> because attached to Hotel Victoria, yes. you have Bertie's nightclub. Yeah. And um, uh, would you like to tell us about your experiences at Bertie's nightclub? I think that's best left in the past. <laughs> Along with tall trees. <laughs> I think it was sailors. Mm. Anyway, going back to the Victoria Hotel, it was completed just ahead of the Headlands Hotel, built by rival architect Sylvanus Travail. So the Victoria Hotel owners, who included a number of council members, had placed difficulties in the way of Travail so that the Victoria could be completed first. This enabled them to promote their investment as the largest hotel in Newquay but afterwards the Heaven to promote theirs as the largest in the west of England. However, the Victoria Hotel could boast about their lift. So earlier we went down onto the beach, the Great Western Beach, and we found the entrance and exit of the lift shafts went all the way down to the beach from this hotel. And you could walk down some steps and literally be on the beach. Tolkien Beach. The tide is right out, which is exactly what we wanted. So we've come down onto the beach to try to find the exit of the tunnel that comes from the lift shaft to the Victoria. So there's the back of the Victoria Hotel, and somewhere at the foot of these cliffs is the tunnel. So there was a bit of a rock fall around the entrance to the tunnel. 
They're expecting it to be kind of barricaded off. I don't think it's been repaired. It's no longer used since there was a problem about 2010, 2012, something like that. The lift shaft, the lift went down the shaft. Stag do inside the lift had to be rescued at the time. So here it is, the entrance to the lift shaft. And you can just make out the roof line as Victoria. Some people behind the railings are. Let's go and have a closer look. So they used to have a lovely brick arch above the entrance there. And that collapsed. I don't know if we can see any evidence on the beach here. I think it's quite incredible that until quite recently it was still being used. The hotel seems so archaic and old and stately, elegant, from a different era. And I guess this does too. So it's quite amazing to think it's only been shut in the last decade or so. All evidence of that archway has been swept away by the sea. No bricks, hardly any cement. Ah! It looks like this is it. Oh, look at this. I was wrong. Look at that. I think I might need to turn the camera the other way up. Does that look like a date? Yeah, so these would have been the piers that did the arch. Wow, what was the upside down there? Andrew, you've been very naughty. I've done a health and safety risk assessment. You've I'm, taken your I'm own risk assessment hat. and you've got your hard hat on and you think you're fine. Uh, and you're advocating I come up too. Get your leg over there. Oh. Up to you. Um, do you think we should be doing this? I've signed the disclosure to say, you know, we're taking this at our own risk. And you must tell the viewers they do it at their own risk. Yeah, don't do this. Yeah, don't do what we're doing. Yeah, and if you are doing it, it's nothing to do with us. Yeah. Is that alright? Yeah. Lip shaft now, isn't it? <laughs> oh wow! Look at this. Look. See right. See it right at the end there. Gosh, yes, a load of debris, isn't there? So at the very end. Gosh, it's a long, it's a long, long tunnel, shaft. Isn't it? A very long tunnel, and there's something white at the end, which you think might be a I think door. It's a door at the very end, and that must be behind that where the, where the lift would be, isn't it? So it's all brick lined. Isn't it's supposed it? to be quite a feat to dig this out. Well, it's quite a coup for them to have this as well, isn't it? Okay, so as you can see, it's really dark in here. What do you think? Yeah, it's a very long tunnel. Um, I'm trying to work out how long. I reckon that's probably, what, 80 to 100 foot tunnel? Yeah, these tiles. Are these tiles? Or bri I bricks. They were bricks, but... Very unusual like colour. And oh, some up there, look. Like that are smashed, they do look like terracotta tiles. Yeah, don't they've they? come through this, and you can see where it's been hewn out of the cliff face here, yeah. the steps going down. Yeah. Can you imagine the people that have come through here over the years? In their Edwardian dresses. Yeah, yeah. Well, they might have been covering their modesty to get to the beach to go into one of the beach huts. Yes, yeah. So that they could go swimming without being seen, wasn't it? The and ladies kept their dignity. It's probably quite a fancy hotel, isn't it? Oh, so you probably have yeah. to be fairly affluent to be able to afford this. Mm. And it's almost like you can get, get, you know, you can see advertising it now, isn't it? You know. Well, we could probably dig out one of the um, brochures. And it wouldn't have taken them very long to get from their room to the beach. To down here, because it goes straight yeah. down the lift, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I do know that there was a, I mean, they've sort of all closed up now. I think the lift is still operating in the hotel. I think it's yeah. the same lift, the same it lift goes shaft. Up to the floor. Yeah, they've just the prevented it from floor. coming down here. Well, I know you're not supposed to do that, but that's quite good fun, actually. <laughs> I know you're not meant to, but it's got to be done, really, Very hasn't much. it? <laughs> On the back cover is the advert for the Hotel Victoria. These adverts in here are so interesting. So it says the dining room and lounge have been enlarged, the floor space being practically doubled. Running hot and cold water has been laid to all bedrooms and additional bathroom and lavatory accommodation provided. Central heating is installed to all the public rooms and corridors in addition to the open fires. One of its most striking features is a passenger lift 
by which visitors can reach the bathing beaches from any floor, a feature we believe to be almost unique. There is an excellent garage and accommodation and private lockup, so everybody that brought a car had a garage to put their little car in, and I guess that reflects the fact that all cars had a roof, they resembled more of a carriage at the time, but it's very interesting what they say about their lift being almost unique. I wonder if it is, it, it certainly feels like it and it's very special. One of my favourite drawings in this book, it shows the ladies going out surf riding in Newquay. And don't they look wonderful with their hats on and wooden bodyboards. Can't come to Newquay without mentioning and filming some surfing. Than the going out. It feels like everybody in Newquay just surfs. I'm sure they don't. Not everyone in Cornwall knows how to surf. I don't. I used to bodyboards with my dad when I was a kid. It wasn't quite such a big industry as it is now. And we didn't have wetsuits. Just your swimsuit in the water. You used to get really bad blisters where the board rubbed against your rib cage. Looking beautiful out there today. I can understand why they use it here. The water breaks so perfectly. So now that we've shown everybody the exit onto the beach, yeah. we go and find the lift shaft we do. inside the hotel. So we need to ask them, is that still the same lift? It's got to be the same lift shaft. I can't see it. Yeah. There won't be anything different. No. Um, we're going to have to have a ride in the lift. <gasps> Are we? Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. <laughs> Bit weird. Okay. <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> So these hotels boasted that they had ballrooms, the finest marble, the best wooden floors, and they had their own orchestras that would play for your, your evening's entertainment. Gosh, look at all this magnificent room. Almost feels a bit redundant these days for the orchestra. I'm sure it would have been. It's beautiful, isn't it? Look at all the detail on here. It's beautiful. So they would have played up here. And everybody would have danced all the way around. Oh, yes, because this is right in the centre, yeah. isn't it? That is the band stand. Yep. The last seat was a part of that. That moves, that's does it? Oh, that's, that's the hinge side. No. Oh, wow, look oh, at look that. At that. Oh, gosh. All oh, the candlesticks in there, all the silvers in there. <laughs> it is, look at that. Not quite. They're, they're more good, like girly. Yeah, they're not quite silver. No. <laughs> <laughs> we just sold them. Uh. Yeah, yes. Entrance onto the beach. Yes. Gosh. <laughs> this has to count as the most daft thing we've done yet. <laughs> Ah, see, I was expecting like an old type of wooden, sort of really old fashioned lift. This is, uh, is it just ground? Beach. Oh, yeah. Staff only. Oh, basement. Or basement. See, you're going basement, I'm going beach. <laughs> this just doesn't exist anymore, no. does it? So I've chosen ground floor. Ooh. <gasps> oh, we're in a lift. <laughs> We've had a fantastic day today, looked around three hotels and told you three fabulous stories. Yes, a, a nostalgic trip around some of the sort of former glories, these wonderful hotels yeah. in the seaside resort of Newquay. So we had the Headland Hotel with Riot. Oh, we did, didn't we? And then we went on a magical mystery tour a with the Beatles Atlantic. at the Atlantic. And we then ended up here at the Hotel Victoria. With its unique lift shaft all the way to the beach. We've really enjoyed making this video today. If you've enjoyed it as well, then do us a favour and leave a thumbs up. Yes. If you want another nostalgic look at around Newquay, um, pop it in the comments. Put more nostalgic videos. Or even just more. It's or much more. simpler. Yeah. yeah, that'd be easier. So why, until, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> so until next time, we'll sign off for now. Say bye. Bye. bye.